Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. I hope everybody, I know I have a lot of viewers in Florida. I hope you're okay. I saw the total devastation happen yesterday like everybody else. Uh, and there are still a couple of friends that I have down there that I haven't heard from. Uh, so um, my, my prayers are out to everybody and I hope everybody's okay. And uh, for those of you who know me that I haven't been able to get a hold of, if you eventually see this, please call me. Uh, please let me know somehow that you're okay. Um, I'm going to do my best Mr. Guns and Gear impression uh, out here on Lake Hartwell here in Northeast Georgia. We're hoping that the hurricane misses us. Um, it, a couple times it's changed. It looks like our area might not get hammered. We're going to get a lot of rain, but we might not get hammered. But here we are. Um, and I want to tell you, it's literally uh, 9.20 as I'm recording this. I'm going to try to one take this so I can get it up to you. It's 9.20 a.m. Uh, Thursday morning and today at 11 o'clock a.m. in New York the uh, the Antioch, Antioch uh, case which is challenging New York's CCIA the Concealed Carry Improvement Act it's going to be heard today there's, there's a hearing today for the temporary restraining order this is the same case where last month GOA it's GOA case uh, it was dismissed because uh, they didn't the uh, they said that the plaintiff didn't have standing and the judge then went on to say that had you had standing, this is all pretty much unconstitutional. And then I, I did a video, I'll float it above, basically saying the judge didn't have the stones to do it. So what happened was GOA regrouped. They got a couple more um, plaintiffs. I think there's six total now. And one of them specifically has said, actually a couple of them, but the one that uh, the briefs are talking about in opposition to this from New York, uh, from the AG's office, etc., they're saying, hey, listen, Judge, um, when you said in the last case that this was unconstitutional, you were wrong. Uh, we're going to appeal whatever you do, so please go light, go easy on us. And I'm going to tell you some of the things that they said. I got some notes here because this is obviously not my typical setup. Um, but one specific one specific plaintiff that they mention a lot in these filings is uh, Plaintiff Mann. And Plaintiff Mann has said on record that he intends to carry his firearm at church. Now, places of worship in New York have been deemed sensitive places. Thus, if you carry there, it is a felony. New York State Police have said that you will not be, have any leeway. If you violate this law, you will be arrested. New York Police Department put out a thing uh, that said you will be guilty until proven innocent. You'll be charged and you'll be arrested until you prove otherwise. And that anybody carrying a gun in these sensitive places will be deemed carrying illegally. Not, not the you know, innocent until proven guilty stuff that this country was founded on. So he said he will carry in church. He also said he'll carry in his home because his home is physically part of the same building that his church is in. And he received a letter saying that his location, because there's a church, was a sensitive place. And as a result, he was supposed to turn over all of his guns to, to law enforcement to avoid the felony. And he said, I'm not doing it, uh, which a lot of people should be saying. I'm not doing it. I'm not complying with your unconstitutional bullshit. Um, and good for me and, for, and the other uh, plaintiffs for stepping up and good for GOA for take, taking this case back to the same judge, fixing with the, the issues the judge said that were weak in the case and hammering it. Um, so he said he refused to do that. He also has received a letter from New York saying that is a sensitive place. The state attorney general's office uh, also filed a brief with this judge. Uh, saying that, uh, you know, they didn't say anywhere in their filing that Governor Hochul has taken a, a specific action against them, but she's taken against everybody in the state. Um, so there was no injury claimed from the governor, therefore she shouldn't be one of these defendants. Also, uh, a judge uh, that was part of, sorry, bug, uh, a judge that they mentioned, you know, nobody filed uh, an application with him and he didn't deny anybody, so this case should be dropped. But the real thing is New York is trying to just nitpick and saying, oh, you know, this this governor didn't do anything to these individuals. This judge didn't deny these people their license to carry. Uh, but in fact, they're doing it across the state. Um, they also said, the AG's office, that um, in order for this case to have any bearing, people should have submitted a license, uh, an application, and be denied like Bruin did, which is why it went all the way to the Supreme Court uh, in, the, in the Bruin case. Um, Excuse me. And also they said, uh, this is some of the things that they said that they wanted the court to consider in, in this case. They said that, judge, listen, um, buddy, pal, if any part of this law could be de deemed constitutional, then you should let this whole law stand. 
because part of it's constitutional instead of ripping it all apart, which I thought was hilarious. For instance, the, uh, one of the specifics they gave in there is like, if you see, Judge, that any of our sensitive places, like schools and polling places, if you agree that those are sensitive places, then this whole case should be tossed out and the law should be allowed to stand. Like, everybody else should be infringed upon because, you know, we got it right in a couple spots. Um, they also said that New York's good moral character standard is constitutional, even though in the Bruin decision, the Supreme Court said you can't do that. No good cause, no, not, nothing like that. All they did was reword it and change how they, uh, they do things. Uh, New York is also saying that their social media disclosure is, is, is constitutional because it's going to be part of the background check. And since a background check is required for these uh, permits, then it should be okay to look into someone's social media as part of their background. Um, <clears throat> he also said that, uh, oh, the, the attorney said that their sensitive places are constitutional in fact, because in the Bruin decision, uh, the Bruin court, in the, the Supreme Court, said that, uh, that well, or refused to or did not specifically define sensitive places. So this is how we define it, basically all, everything, everything. And then here's the kick in the, in the pants. The, they said that the Second Amendment doesn't allow carry into private property or into another's home without consent. And that the text of the Second Amendment doesn't say that. So therefore, it, this whole thing should be tossed out. Except the problem with their, their, uh, their defense for New York is that uh, Clarence Thomas said, text, history, and tradition. A lot of the things that is going on in this country isn't specific in the actual text of any of the uh, Bill, Bill of Rights. That's why he said history and tradition. So was it part of the nation's history or tradition in 1791 when the Second, when the second Amendment was adopted and, and uh, was it part of history and tradition for people to not be allowed to carry their gun in any place that, like, a, a, a public park? Um, anything where people went. Because crime, you will, you will fee see crime in these places. They're not sensitive, like, bubbles where crime doesn't exist. And none of these laws do anything to these criminals who carry all the time. Uh, so part of the text, part of the history and tradition of the country was you carried your firearm. You never knew when uh, evil was going to show up. Uh, so New York has missed the ball on this. And like I said, at 11 o'clock, they're going to have a hearing today. And my anticipation is to be able to come back and do another video saying that this judge has uh, stopped the enforcement of the CCIA. That's my hope. If he doesn't, I'll be back to let you know what's going on. If you want to know this, this information... Because this will affect other states. Uh, other states that have doubled down since Bruin to uh, restrict our rights. If you want to know what's going on, subscribe to the channel. Uh, this is where I will put out news every single day. Try to do it wherever I am. Like here I am at Lake Hartwell in Georgia. And uh, I'll get you that information uh, multiple times a day. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Join this growing freedom family. I would love to have you. And... Uh, until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun, keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe, because crime can happen anywhere, even out on our dock. You never know. Um, I'll see you on the next one, y'all, and uh, shall not comply. Take care.